What we're going to do today is look at how to create this kind of a scene within Star CCM Plus. And so what we really need to understand is how a scene is built. So as we look at this scene, we're looking at quite a few different displayers. So you have a displayer showing the surface of the car. You have one showing the undercarriage and the grill, as well as the tires. And you can't very well see it, but there's also a translucent ground plane. We also have annotations in the scene. You can see here we have an annotation of another scene showing the underhood mesh and one showing a plot. You'll also see that we're animating another displayer which is a streamline displayer. So it's showing the derived parts of streamlines. So let's look at how we can construct a scene like this. I'm going to stop my animation. Alright, so the first thing to do is to create a new empty scene. Now you can always create a new mesh scene and that will default to creating two displayer or one displayer, one being a geometry displayer showing surfaces and mesh. The next default is to create a new scalar scene. That will create a new outline displayer showing the outlines and all the parts and creates a scalar displayer but doesn't put any parts into it. And vector is very similar except instead of a scalar it has a vector displayer and empty just creates a new scene but without any displayers. So let's go ahead and construct everything from scratch. So now I have a new empty scene. You'll notice I'm able to rotate this triad down at the bottom. So I have basically the background of a scene, but no objects in it. And I can tell because I have a new scene, I have displayers, but I don't have any in there. So what I'm going to do is create a new geometry displayer. And this geometry displayer allows me to show surfaces, meshes, feature lines, and also control the coloring and the opacity. There are extra options that are down here a little bit lower and these are going to be to show what representation, uh, to display line widths, to do transforms and some displayer of some video card properties and we'll get into all those a little bit later. So the first thing is in a displayer I need to first of all tell it what I want it to do. So in this displayer I want to show the surface not necessarily the outline uh, I do want to show the mesh and I want to have a constant color. I want it to be completely opaque. And I do want it to be smooth shade and you can see it's defaulted to smooth shade. Okay, so that's what the displayer will do. Now we'll add objects to that displayer and you can do this one of two ways. The first way is to select the parts within the displayer and then manually add from the regions or from the parts. In this case, let's say we want to show the exterior surface, so the surface of the car. And so you'll see now we have the shell of the car, so just that singular boundary. So if I did it the other way, what I would do is, let me clear the selection here, I would simply go to my region and to the boundary that I'm interested in, so in this case the exterior surface, and I would drag it into the scene. Now the only addition to this is when you have multiple displayers, a pop-up will appear when you release the mouse in the scene and you'll be allowed to select which displayer you'd like it to go into. So we would continue the same method to add in the tires and add in the grill. But in my case, since I've already created a scene with all that, you can see here in my color scene where I've got the blue body, black tires, and gray underbody, I can use those displayers in another scene. So I'll simply expand my colors scene and I'll select the things that I want to see. So the tunnel, control select the tires, grill, and body. I'll right click, copy, and I can go back to my scene plot tab, which is currently the same as this scene. However, it stays active depending on what scene you have active. So if I go to mesh, you'll see this update to the properties of that scene. So it makes things a little bit clearer. And what I'll do is I'll copy my displayers into my scene. I'm sorry, I'll paste my displayers into my scene. So, paste. And what you can see here is I've now recreated everything on that scene. But I'll remove this extra displayer that I have in here, which was showing the body. And so you can see now I have that scene constructed. So for each displayer, I can control the color independently. So for every color you want, you need a new displayer. 
All right, so let's look at adding other objects in the scene. So let's say, for instance, I need to be able to look at, say, the of my car here. Uh, let's do a uh, let's do a mesh scene so we can see what we got. So let's if I look at the side of my underhood, and I zoom the scene to kind of where I want it. Now I can create an annotation out of the scene. You can do this by right clicking on the scene, sorry, in the white in the background of the scene, and create a scene image annotation. Or you can simply go to the scene and drag it into the scene you want to see. So I open my scene one, and I drag mesh scene two into the scene. And now you'll see I have an image of what mesh scene two was showing. So you can always change the annotation within the scene that is showing the annotation. So you can see here, this is my scene one, and I'm showing this annotation, which is scene image four. I could put it in the background. And so now it stands behind my car, so I can put my car over the top of it. You can change the position, and you can change essentially how it's viewed. Well, there's the uh, uh, inactive, so now I won't be able to move it. So if I mouse over, I can't move the object. But if it is active, then I'll be able to move it. So it's a good way of locking things out once you get them in the right position. So that is a plot image annotation. You can do exactly the same operations if you would like to look at, I'm sorry, that's a scene image annotation. You can do the exact same operation if you want to look at, let's say, residuals. So now we have the residuals plotted down below, our scene plotted next to it, and then our active scene behind that. So let's add some extra pieces to this. So if I create a new, let's say, streamline, so this is a derived part, an object. I'm going to reference all the regions, integrate velocity, and I'll seed from a part, and I'm going to seed from a presentation grid that I made, which is a series of points just upstream of the car. And we'll do a 5x5 five five resolution. So I should have in the neighborhood of about 25 streamlines. And the thing that I would like to focus on is what to do with the object after it's created. And this is just the default behavior you can always manually create anything during the process. So if I create my, dis my object, my streamline object here, I hit create, and then I don't do any operations, what you'll see is I have my streamline, but it's not in any displayers. So what I could do then is say, all right, well, I want to make a new streamline displayer and add the part of those streamlines into it. So you can see now I've done what would have happened if I had new streamline displayer select. So whether you do it at the first step or not, you can always construct the scene the way you want it. So the other thing I want to do here is let's drag our color bar up and let's show velocity. So now you can see I can just simply drag my color bar around to fit the size that I want. Compress it a little bit. And so now we've kind of colored things the way we'd like. So you can see in these few simple steps, we've constructed a scene with multiple colors, just one displayer for every color, a streamline displayer showing the streamlines of colored by velocity over the car. We've created an annotation of a scene plot and an annotation of the residual plot. And this is the core setup within Star Scene Plus to create scenes and manipulate and view data. Thank you.